last week, <clears throat> what we did was we allowed several different people to share um, some things from different psalms, and uh, it was real good, and the Lord blessed. <clears throat> and um, let's see, uh, I think Alana's on here. Alana, we, what we did was we <clears throat> shared some things from the a psalm that we might have seen Adon, Adonai and the, the feelings of, of that spirit and what God had in mind. And, uh, you know, you've got a house full of kids and so many things that you carry, but would you want to just share a little bit on one of the psalms, on that psalm that you've gotten so much out of? You don't have to, but just asking. And yeah, I'd love to. My children just ran outside, so we might have had a few minutes. That's good. Um, oh, I'm just trying to find. So, um, it's in Psalm 35. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get it up, so just bear with me. Um, sorry, guys, I wasn't organized. Let's see. I wrote oh, an email to you about it. Here we go. Okay. Right. No, that's not it. Right, let me get my Bible. I will go from memory. That's fine. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no problem. We're here for the word and we're ready when you are. Okay, awesome. Okay, so um, it's a Psalm of David and it's Psalm 35. And um, the first ver like number of verses, one to eight. Now, before I go sharing, did you share what you emailed me? No, I didn't. Okay, cool. Then I'll share what I got from the Lord and then um, what you explained to me. So um, I was looking at um, Psalm 35 and it was reminding me quite a bit of First Peter. And the first eight verses are like David in the corridor of the suffering and literally his, Randy termed it this way, his soul is his counselor because it's basically everything like fight against those who fight me, against me, take hold of the shield and buckler and stand up for my help, uh, stop those who pursue me. And, but in verse three, in the middle of it, he asks the Lord to say to my soul, I am your salvation. So he actually asks the Lord, please say to my soul, I am your salvation. And then he goes on with his rant. <laughs> Bring shame to those who seek my life. Let them be turned back in confusion. Let them be like chaff. The angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery. Let the angel of the Lord pursue them. And the destruction come upon them unexpectedly. And I'm just like, okay, that's, that's a whole lot of um, get get back at them and the word he uses for lord isn't adonai is it jehovah i can't remember off the top of my head yeah i think it's jehovah yeah and so then um verse nine there's a change and it says and my soul shall be joyful in the lord and it shall rejoice in his salvation and i was just like Oh, yes, the, his salvation being the one in First Peter, where it's the salvation of our soul. Um, and what, in one of the classes you were talking about, um, David being a prophet, was one of the, I think it was class 74. And um, in First Peter, it talks about how the Spirit has shown to us the salvation of our soul through the prophets. Um, and how important the salvation of our soul is because he actually, the angels desire to look into it, but he has revealed it to us in this time. And anyway, so the Lord is teaching me how special the salvation of our soul is because he's, it's been revealed to us and the, even the prophets desire to look into this. So anyway, um, I was just like, yes, verse nine is here. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord and rejoice in his salvation. And from memory, I think that's Adonai. I don't have my notes with me. Um, I think that's the first time he uses the word Adonai. And he's suddenly coming um, under the Lord and under the Lord's, uh, the Lord is now his caregiver. And he starts talk, to talk about the word like, Lord, who is there like you? 
Um, and then it goes on to the corridor that he's in. He asked me to think, fierce weaknesses rise up. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. So his soul is still sorrowful. But then verse um, 13 and 14, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. I placed about as though he were my brother or my friend and I bowed down heavily as one mourns for his mother. Um, and the Lord stopped me here and just showed, like, opened the eyes of my heart to see that David was not just um, turning the other cheek in public and not and just, okay, well, I just won't revile. And I'll just, like, make a good face of it. Uh, in the quiet of his own home, he was actually incredibly concerned for those who were persecuting him. Like, I bowed down heavily as one mourns for his own mother. I paced about as though he were my friend or my brother when they were sick. I humbled myself with fasting for them so like real down deep in his heart there's been a massive change from the hate now cares for the evildoer um, and not just in a i'll just get through it and look kind of christian way like <laughs> you know i'll do my best and just not revile back because in first peter it says you know don't revile though like don't revile back don't play evil for evil i'm like okay cool maybe i can do that on the outside pardon i'm actually on the phone i'm i'm telling people about jesus do you want to listen yeah um, but then the evildoers just keep going. Like, they rejoiced. They gathered against me. Attackers gathered against me. Hey, but if you want to make noise, you can go outside. This is quite fun now, okay? <laughs> and they gnashed me with their teeth. And then he turns to the Lord again. And I got really confused because the next bit um, is Lord rescue me again. And I was like, oh man, is he just gone straight back in to Jehovah? And looking for that's a charger yeah and then it was in my phone thank you and going back for oh i need to be rescued but randy was explaining that he's actually asking the lord to protect christ in him and to stand up like to t take care of this of him because he's in a white spirit and i was looking at the difference in the next so that goes from 17 to 28 um the difference is that he isn't asking the lord to absolutely trounce them and make their way slippery and dark or anything like that um it says vindicate me according to your righteousness hey, sorry, Caleb, there's like 20 people listening and you're making loads of noise can you be quiet just for a minute please? and and don't let them rejoice over me hmm. and don't let them say in their hearts we've swallowed them up um and then it's in verse 27 it starts talking let them be let them shout for joy and be glad let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. So he's hoping that these evildoers will come to know the Lord. And that's just First Peter. Like, I think, I, I can't remember the verses, but there's ones about, you know, that they may come to know the Lord. And the end of it is all, like the last verse is, my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. So he's gone from lamenting his position and wanting the Lord to like squish everyone to just praising the Lord and hoping that these evildoers will come in to know the Lord, but also the Lord will stand up for it and cover him because he's gone on a scare of going low. And that's all I have because that's all I have to share and that's all the time I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alana. That's great. We appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> if, well, if we recorded that, it would be fun to when she talked about them gnashing. I think it was gnashing on on with their teeth. Right after that, there was a big scream from the kids or something. And if we could put that scream first and then say, and then they gnashed on me, that would be good. Anyway, okay. Um, all right, so. I'm going to go ahead and um, and share, pick up where I, I left off. <clears throat> and uh, remember, we were going to go into Psalm 22, and Kelly had shared on it, so I'm not going to go through the majority of it. I'm just going to hit some highlights. But it is uh, Psalm 22, really, if there is any psalm in the Bible that really shows what Christ went through or the sufferings of Christ and what they did and what they lied about and what they, you know, all these things. Um, it is Psalm 22. 
And, uh, and of course, uh, much of that is quoted in the New Testament. So there's no question that Psalm 22 is the sufferings of Christ. So um, um, just a, a little pre-note here. This whole psalm is about the corridor of unjust and unfair sufferers. We can learn so much about 1 Peter from this psalm. The final uh, phase of the corridor is a saved soul that has not yet been delivered, but sees the great end results of being with his Adonai. So he remains through the rest of the corridor in a right spirit. Okay, so uh, Psalm 22, 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from, and from the words of my roaring? So uh, some of this, obviously, Jesus quoted on the cross. And, uh, and obviously, these are some of the sufferings of Christ that you, you might experience when you're in that corridor, when you're or, or when you're in these specific sufferings. And that is that, in the beginning, it may feel like God has forsaken you. And you may really feel that. <clears throat> um, and then, as I said, I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> skip down and just give uh, verse 7 and 8 as a small synopsis of the incredible things done to him, the incredible sufferings that we're talking about, that we might go through, um, and him wanting us to be with the Lord. <clears throat> so verse 7 and 8, <clears throat> All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. So, of course, you remember these being quoted too, that Jesus was being mocked and, you know, Jesus was the Son of God and Jesus, you know, but they're, they're mocking and saying all this stuff against him. And, um, uh, and you can't do anything about it. You are nailed up there. Um, and um, so, let's see. Uh, see the degree of unfair abuse in verse 7 and throughout. It shows him bearing the worst kind of wrong sufferings. Okay, so then uh, in those verses, verse 8 particularly, we hear the evildoers speak. He trusted in Jehovah for deliverance. He trusted in Jehovah for deliverance. These Pharisees and chief priests have no understanding of God or what God wants based on their words right there. First of all, they're referring to Jehovah as if Jehovah is supposed to deliver him when in reality the person who is there and responsible, if you will, if I can use those words, is Adonai. Okay, so they're totally just picking, you know, Jehovah. And then the, wor the words are, um, uh, let him, let's say he trusted in Jehovah for deliverance. And that's not what he's trusting for. That's not what we're trusting for. We shouldn't be trusting for Jehovah for deliverance when we're in the corridor, when we're going through those sufferings, <clears throat> we should be trusting in Adonai to see us through and help us to maintain that spirit and that uh, uh, nature <clears throat> and that proper response by the, by, uh, the Lamb, if you will, uh, within that. That's the goal. So they're, they're mocking him over something that's, you know, not even proper. <clears throat> okay, and then, um, well, I wrote, they totally don't know that this suffering is neither about deliverance nor the work of Jehovah in areas that belong to Adonai. <clears throat> okay, so then verse 16, and so we get into a little bit more of those sufferings, and again, I'm skipping a bunch of this, the 
hardcore sufferings here. Verse 16 and 17, and we'll go through 18 also. <clears throat> For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. <clears throat> so just an ongoing internal attack, external attack, uh, that, uh, and you're already in suffering because of whatever, the physical thing of the cross, but, but whatever you or I would be going through as well. Um, and um, and so we are we are confronted with reality when we talk about the sufferings of Christ. We're not just talking about well somebody you know didn't talk to me or somebody said something against me or said, was smart when I respond I asked for a response or none of that stuff. If we can't handle that stuff, I mean you know <laughs> if we. You know, if we can't uh, run with the footman, how are we going to run with the horseman? You know, so there's, <clears throat> um, so so these things are being brought to bear. <clears throat> but now skipping down, because like I said, that this psalm was covered last week. Uh, skipping down to um, verse 20, starting with verse 24, 24 and 25. <clears throat> and it's in the midst of the trial now. It's in the midst of it, with all that they're saying, with all that they're doing, with all the mockery, with all of the accusations where it would be stupid hanging from a cross in one sense to try to justify yourself, though one of the thieves did do that. <clears throat> um, now he's speaking as uh, one whose soul is saved, okay? For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, okay? So he's, regardless of what the affliction, regardless of what's said, regardless of how bad it looks, regardless of who believes it, regardless of who joins together against you, God has not despised that affliction or abhorred that affliction, the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. Oh, my Lord. The, the scriptures say in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, gosh, I know it. It's a 318, I think, that we're changed into that same image while we look at, into his face, while looking into at his face and this says neither hath he hid his face from him okay so that we actually can uh, I don't know how to put this we actually perceive through revelation talking about us going through it the face of Jesus as it were going through it and we are changed so that we have the ability to to, to uh, enter that corridor and come out of it uh, bringing glory to God and glory to the Father through Jesus in us. Um, so, uh, but when he cried unto him, he heard. That's the end of verse 24. And then verse 25, Psalm 22, 25, my praise shall be of thee. See, this is it. It is, first of all, this is what he's doing in the sufferings. He's not uh, bearing down on how evil, not in this Psalm anyway, he's not bearing down on how evil they are or how much they've hurt you or how little I'm deserved. It's not about them or you. It's about the Lord. And, and so my praise shall be of thee. All right. So that's where his heart is. And that's what he's that's where he ends up being at. 
You know, all of those things are going on that are horrible in Psalm 22. But this is where his heart is at. It's at giving praise to the to the Father. Okay, so um, in the great congregation, I will pay my vows before them that fear him. And then I wrote here, so these verses in Psalm 22 are clearly referring to Christ crucified while in great distress and in need of God, the Trinity, to become his Adonai. One of them, all of them, whatever. But in need, there's, see, there's no question there's a need. There is a need. It's not like you sail through these things and no, no, you know, it's like water off a duck's back or something like that. No, there's a need, but your need isn't deliverance. Your need is the Lord. Your need is Adonai to reinforce in you that spirit and that nature that you can glorify God in your, you know, in your soul and in your being. Your being is glorifying God more than your words. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> uh, so therefore, I'm going to skip down. Well, well, the verses we just read, you see him moving out of all of that turmoil and all of that pain and all of that uh, mockery and all of that stuff. And in the verses we read, you see him uh acknowledging the Lord that is with him, okay? And then um, in verse uh, 30 and 31, uh, a seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. Okay, so several things in these verses. Number one, a seed, he's talking, that's singular, a seed. That's Jesus, the one who's going through it first. See, he's going through it here. He's going through it at the cross. We will go through it also. But it begins with a single seed, single seed. Does that remind anybody of a scripture in the New Testament? Maybe the Gospel of John? I don't know. Maybe chapter 12? I don't know. 24? Maybe that. Except, uh, <clears throat> except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, a seed shall serve him. Now, we always think of service in terms of, well, I'm going to, I'm going to play some important part or some, you know, uh, during the, the gathering or maybe some little part, but I'm going to serve the Lord there. But let me tell you, the, the suffering servant of Isaiah, the whole book, is, present, is, is, is uh, rebutting that thought. And is showing him as the one, as the crucified, that the service he is doing is he is serving the Lord by offering up that, you know, we say offering up praise. He's offering up praise in the midst of horrible trials. He's offering up this spirit that that the Father will exalt. You know, you know that he he. He became as a uh, man, and then he became as a man. He became as a servant, and then as a servant, he became as a criminal on the cross. And then, you know, uh, then he became obedient unto death. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of uh, things in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> all right. So that all that exaltation talked about there in Philippians 2 doesn't isn't doesn't mention the word salvation for he died for salvation, he bought this, he did this for somebody. It's the spirit in which he did what he did, totally apart from everybody else and what and results. And God exalted that spirit, okay? Which is the end of the corridor. That's how you get out of that. 
Okay. <coughs> um, so, uh, I, where is it? And God, let's see, a seed shall serve him. It shall be counted, accounted to the Lord, which is Adonai. This service of this seed, which falls into the ground and dies, that other seeds may come forth bearing that same, that same um, essence, the same kind of seed, so that they also may bring forth fruit, not by preaching and winning souls, but by falling into the ground and dying, as Jesus described uh, in John 12. So, um, that single seed is Christ crucified, who is a servant unto God, even unto death, which is verse 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because of that service, which is not just death, but the spirit he had in death. See, we, we talk a lot about death, you know. We say, well, you know, well, I died to, I died to this, you know. But there's a spirit in it that is... The, the gold that First Peter talks about, it is. That's the gold. That's the thing that, that's God's means of, of exchange, if you will. <clears throat> and um, uh, it shall be accounted to the Lord Adonai, that's the word Adonai right there, Lord, in verse 30, for a generation. This death and the spirit of death and this going into death as a seed of what you want in the future is accounted as a generation, plural. A, a seed, singular, for a generation of seeds, but seed in the future. Okay, verse 31 they shall come and shall declare his righteousness, his who? This servant, this, su this suffering servant, in the way that he's gone through this. And they will declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born. You see, this is an ongoing thing, man. This, the, this isn't just you, you know, we never got into all that in, in First Peter, and maybe we will. But it's not just about you going through something and then some great thing happening between you and God. This is meant to be God's way of bringing forth more. Um, probably can't quote it right now, but um, ah, I'm not going to try because I'll mess it up <clears throat> in First Peter. Um, Let's see, the servants, Adonai, counts those who were joined to him in that kind of death, whether it was 2,000 years ago and you and I went into death with him, or greater. Right now, every day, every generation, there are those who are with him in that, uh, in that spirit. And those who are with him in that spirit the servants Adon, Adonai counts those who were joined to him as a generation, plural, as we said. In other words, the fulfillment of the desire of Elohim in Genesis is coming to pass that there would be those many made in his image. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. <clears throat> All right, so the servants, Christ crucified's righteousness, which is not found in his own justifications, because that's what we want to do. Our righteousness is this to the, to the evildoers and, and to the, all those who are bringing this upon me or those who might hear it and believe it and join sides or, or at least be disappointed with us or whatever. We want to say and we want to tell of our righteousness 
and how this isn't true, how we are this or that. See, that's declaring our own righteousness, and it's the wrong righteousness in the first place. All right? So, um, the, remember, he, it said, shall declare his righteousness. Uh, the servant, Christ crucified's righteousness, which is not found in his own justifications, and his oneness with him are declared unto a people yet unborn at that time. Comma, that Adonai, let me say, let me say this, that Adonai, the unnamed Adonai, didn't say Father, you know, or Son, or Holy Spirit, that Adonai, the unnamed Father, hath done this. All right, now let's read in Ephesians, and I want to show you. I want to show you, okay? Ephesians 1, and um, let's see. Well, we'll start at verse 3, and we'll read 3 through 6. I want you to listen to the Adonai in here that is being declared in relationship to Jesus. Blessed be the God, his Adonai, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, it's still talking about the Father, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The Father blessed us with those, but they, he blessed them in Christ, in the first seed that went into this death that um, Psalm 22 is talking about, that's going to bring forth a generation, okay? With all spiritual blessings in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him. Who hath chosen us in him? This Adonai, because of him, not because of us, um, because of his doing and with the hope that we too would have that spirit, that heart, not this old nasty, ugly thing that has to declare itself, that has to be, has to look good, that has to be seen as, as good, that has to be, you know, I can't, well, you know. We, some of us, we've talked about that in uh, Esther class in the past. Uh, Mordecai, his big thing was, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this, you know. And so, um, um, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. And that's the Father. The Father hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Okay. So, there is, um, there are many, many places in the New Testament that we have read, like this one, without any thought of an Adonai. But, but it, and the Psalm didn't say who it was. You know, he, Jesus was praying to him. Uh, David wrote that down, but no mention just of, uh, there's only a mention of an unknown Adonai, but the New Testament begins to reveal who that is. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, uh, in the words that are here, who fulfills verse 30 and 31 of Psalm 22, that the seed will die and grow into a generation and we will have that spirit in the Psalm 22 type experiences. All right. So, uh, so let me summarize. Others will be made after his crucified image in spirit through having the proper spirit and response in sufferings. 
Because of their affliction and need for help from the cruelty of evildoers, Adonai shall account them, because they had that spirit, Adonai shall account them as those who trusted their Adonai in that they did not lift their hand nor use their tongue to justify themselves. In other words, they will be looked upon as in oneness with and as seed of Elohim, members who relied on others, like the Elohim does, instead of their own devices. All right. So <clears throat> when we realize that that came through oneness and uh, we are accepted in the Beloved, and that scripture didn't say we're accepted by the Beloved, it said we're accepted in, and that's oneness. Oneness in Him uh, again, that doesn't mean we're God. It doesn't mean we're Elohim. It means that through oneness with Christ, we have the, um, the ability, the resources of Christ's nature to function <clears throat> with uh, the members of Elohim, the Trinity, in a right spirit and done in a right way okay now we say well I'm one and that means I'm saved well okay good you're saved from hell but but Genesis 22 and Ephesians 1 and you know on and on and on just pretty much most of the New Testament isn't talking about you know there's there's not a whole lot of scriptures uh, in the New Testament, once you start from, if, you, if you're not talking about the Gospels, you're talking about the New Testament, there's not a whole lot of scriptures that are talking about getting saved and going to heaven or whatever. But there's a ton talking about being conformed to the image of Christ. There's a ton like Paul is travailing in birth till Christ is formed in you and he's talking to a church. Um, we, we must see that oneness was never meant to be an excuse to do anything you want because, well, at least I'm one with him and so da da da, -da. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it is that oneness is meant for us to be able not just to have Jesus and, and be kind to, you know, a, an older person or, or to do something special for this little thing here or that or that. No, it's talking about that attitude that you carry yourself in, particularly in the trials or when something happens you don't like or when you've been left out or when you didn't get your way or when, you know, somebody was mean to you and you didn't deserve it. It's got to be bigger than that. And, you know, I mean, one of the... One of the things, and I think this, I think the next psalm that deals with that tonight will, will deal with this, and that is, um, is all those things are great, but Jesus talks about enemy love, enemy love. Okay, can I say it a little different? Jesus talks about evildoer love. Love your enemies. Love your evildoers. And um, uh, so when Jesus starts talking about it, if you really look at it, there's in a couple of places in the, the Gospels, uh, Jesus really gets down and he said, you know, you know, I'm not talking about you know, love your friends or your family or whatever, even the heathen do that. But he, he, he gets into it more than what I'm saying right here. And he presses the point that if you basically, this is what I'm calling you to, is to love your enemies and the love that you do and the love that you do with that is not when you haven't seen them or you hadn't been around them for, you know, six months or whatever. And, you know, uh, and so you say, well, I, I love them, you know, but then next time you see them, all that stuff comes up, unforgiveness and everything else. See, that ain't it. That ain't it. It's when you're hanging on the cross. It's when you're in the corridor. It's when you're going through the sufferings of Christ that he wants that to come forth. 
Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When Jesus said those words, that was not the general forgiveness that is offered to us through the blood of Jesus for the, the cleansing of sins. That's not. That was done, yes, at the cross, but that was done by his death for all men. But I believe that Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do to express that nature, uh, enemy love, if you will. Love your enemies. Um, to show us that this is what's going on inside of him at that point. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> um I'm done with uh, 22. I did want to, let's see, or did I? Yeah, I think that, um, I think that I'm going to skip um, Psalm 35. Um, Lindsay, didn't you share share in 35 or was it 37? I think it was 37. Um, I think I'm going to skip 35 and go into Psalm 37. And I think... that I'm not going to start now because it's rather lengthy. But, let me see here. Excuse me just for one moment and I'm going to go and find the thing over here. Yeah, the psalm is rather lengthy. It probably wouldn't hurt for me to <clears throat> read it now and then hit, hit the high points next week so that we don't have to spend the time reading all that. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. That should be enough right there. <laughs> that, you know, why are you fretting yourself over evildoers? See, and I don't know what we've thought that meant before, but it's talking about when you are, you are being uh, bombarded with stuff that lies about you and think, do things done to you that are so unfair and, and, and people more gathering up and more and more getting behind what they're saying and, you know, and just you start reacting to all that. Well, okay, react not thyself because of evildoers. Fret not because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. See, that's not, that's not just talking about walking down the road and seeing somebody do something bad to other body and you, you go, uh, you know, that's, that upsets me or, you know, uh, or whatever. Or I'm envious over them because they're getting away with something. No, no. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Does that sound familiar? First Peter. Uh, delight thyself, or trust in the Lord, and do good. You remember what we said do good was in First Peter. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Okay, so this is clearly, it's saying, get your mind off of what they're doing to you and get your mind on the Lord. Okay, and when it says, the, delight thyself in the Lord, that he will give you the desires of your heart. I know, I've heard it many times. I've been delighting in the Lord, and, you know, I've been asking him, and they, uh, telling him my delights, you know, that I want. You know, the desires of my heart. Let me tell you, when you are fixated on the Lord, He is your delight. That's the desire of your heart. 
And the proof of that is most of these psalms go back to that once they get over the initial reaction. They go back to that and the Lord is their delight. They're not fretting over evildoers. They, are the, they want the desire of their heart, which is the Lord in this situation. <clears throat> um, verse, uh, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring uh, forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, and that way may be as an evildoer who is, you know, trying to take you down, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to path. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. In other words, to do, do unto others as they did to you. See? In a wrong way. Jesus didn't say do unto others as they do to you. He said do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's different. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Uh, fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in the way, because of the man who bring wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself uh, in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. See, if you can have peace in the midst of the worst thing you've ever gone through in your life, then you have attained something. The wicked plotteth against the just. That is very, very common phrase there. And gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy. and to slay. So that's the poor and needy, and that's you at that moment. And to slay such as be of upright conversation. Does that sound familiar at all? And did we not find out that that specifically was was having the right spirit in First Peter while going through the, the corridor? Um, verse 15, their words shall enter their own heart, their bows shall be broken. A little, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, because you didn't give in to your evildoer spirit. And in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. Notice it says the enemies of the Lord didn't say your enemies see he the Adonai will take care of that stuff it's not your place it's not my place to take care of it well nobody else is standing up for me well that's because you won't you know yield to the, to your Adonai um, uh, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken but he upholdeth the righteous um, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and their days of famine shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, and shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So that, that verse 23 and 24 um, I, I address a lot. Because people, I've had people say, you know, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And they, they're thinking, because I'm, you know, I'm delighting in the Lord, and the, that I'm having, uh, I'm a good man with good steps, 
that nothing bad's going to happen. But the very next verse say, and though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast out, basically. That, that the steps are not that you're perfect. The steps are not about you being perfect. The steps are the Lord's steps are that count. And that if you're, you know, if you're uh, thinking that it's all about, that life is all about the Lord will always keep me from any bad thing or anything, you know, any corridor, you're wrong. You know, though you fall, you have an Adonai to, to hold you up. <clears throat> for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am I old. And I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed out begging for bread. I usually, I usually comment on that one, too. I, I used to say, I, I quoted it, and I'd say, I have been young, and now am I old. And young is better, but that's... <laughs> um, Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment, of justice. The law of his God, the law of his God is in his own heart. Praise God. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. And he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. That's a good song. Man, that's a good one. You can spend forever on that one. All right, let's pray. Father, we are, we are seeking not Randy's understanding of Psalms or of Genesis or of First Peter. We are seeking your understanding. Father, we ask you to open the heart, uh, our heart, and open the eyes of our understanding that me, we may comprehend not the problems, not even why the problems, but we may comprehend the length and the breadth and the height and the depth, and to know know the love of God that passeth understanding. Father, may you overshadow our um, circumstances like you did Mary in that she was just a young girl, in that she'd never had sex, in that all those things. And yet uh, she, she knew what could be said about her. She knew what could be um, uh, could come and all the false accusations and, and be an outcast in the community. <clears throat> but Father, you had your spirit overshadow her and bring forth the seed of Christ regardless of what they thought. So Father, we ask you to keep us in the hour and power of darkness that we may be with you and you not just keeping us, but our heart choosing to be with you and our heart choosing to fret not over those things like we fret so much and so hard 
and yet claim at times that we're, we've got this. Father, help us, help us to see and to know you in a way that it will be you in a way that it will glorify you, Father, by Christ. And it will glorify Christ in us as we give up our fretting and our tendency to become an evildoer ourselves. So we give that up and let your peace guide us through. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank all of y'all for being being here tonight. And I, you know, I just desire so much that the Spirit of God could really be given such a big place. Like, for example, at the gathering. Such a big place within us. and overshadow us and overcome us that we are free in peace to glorify him in word and deed. So bless you. I'm praying for you. And I, y'all pray for me. Amen. Bye-bye.